pour tout. Mais quand elle tape à la machine, elle est rapide, puissante et concentrée, tu vas voir. It took the thousand monkeys a while, but here comes Populaire. Deborah Francoise, always on the keys. Roman Duris, her grumpy boss, determined to lead her to the top of the speed typing league. They're like chalk and cheese, ink and tipex. Surely this can mean only one thing. Arrow left, plus three. Peter, it's an odd thing to be a world champion at. It's also a really odd thing to center a romantic comedy around, right? Typing. Yeah, this film for me felt reactionary and necrophiliac about the past without being particularly classic or, or even very stylish. It's very clearly influenced by and sold on the Mad Men ticket, basically. It's being flogged to us as Mad Men meets the artist, is what I've heard. There's not a very great uh, resemblance to the artist. It's got Berenice Bejo in it. French. And it's got, and it's French. It's got three actors in it, three really good actors in it, who've been really, really good in lots of other things. And here they have brought their B game, or their C game, or their Z game. It's dated, it's willfully dated, of course, but it's so cringing and clunky. It's, it's not simply that it's imitating the reactionary kind of uncool sexual politics of the past. It has questionable sexual politics of its own, frankly. Catherine, it's going for this kind of sports drama thing as well, in the, the Mighty Ducks style, almost victory, then not quite victory, then who knows, she might triumph at the end, which, considering she's hammering away on a typewriter, is a really odd mix for me, anyway, I thought. I do, it's funny, isn't it, because we've all seen the titles of Murder, She Wrote, so we all know how thrilling <laughs> a lady and a typewriter can be. And this really isn't, despite the kind of sports movie um, structure. But the music also does that thing of having her yeah. <laughs> tap away and then there's plinky music in the background. The plinky know. music got, got on my nerves a little bit, I'm afraid, after, after a while. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's an absolute disaster, but I think it compares badly to something like Heartbreaker, which was that one with Romain Jury uh, from a few years ago. And it's partly him. It's that, you know, he's, I find him attractive as an ex person, but he, in this, he's very kind of, he's too much. He's too kind of smarmy. He's always tilting his lid up, his, his, lid up, his lip up, like, yeah. you know, it's too much. It's, well, he's, he's presumably not, trying to channel that John Hamm Mad Men thing, doesn't as work you said, out. But he's it's not too, charming, isn't no. it? You're right. And also, the whole sort of plot is a bit creepy. You know, he's this kind of incredibly wealthy guy with these weird issues that mean he's now suddenly desperate for his typist to be the fastest in the world. And so, so so much so that he has to have her live with him in a non-sexual way so that he can train her. It's just a his slightly strange character, honestly. It's not very lovable. I mean, the original, the, ma the Mad Men template was to bring all that to the table, to bring all the, you know, the drinking and the smoking stuff to the table, but also show the anxiety and fear that went with it. Whereas this just totally decaffeinates it. It tries to imply that they, you can be as happy as children doing all this. Uh, and completely missing the point of Mad Men. I, I don't know, think. drinking and smoking without the fear and anxiety. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's exactly. Yes, exactly. You should try it one day. Monsieur Char reçoit tous les matins. Jeudi, 10h. Mm -hmm. Oui, vous êtes Monsieur Postan. D'accord. D'accord. C'est noté. Bonne journée, Monsieur Constant. C'était pas un dé, mais un T à la fin. Je ne sais pas si c'est très visible. 